Have you ever thought about living in the mountains and wonder what it would be like or where the best place to live in the mountains would be? Stay tuned and we'll talk about it here. Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I talk about everything there is to know about eating, sleeping, living, and, and having fun and being outside because it's one of my favorite things. Uh, here in the Denver metro area and also the foothills. Today I'm up in the foothills because I had a, a listing up here, um, mostly kind of more in the mountains. But anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, where you could live in the mountains that's close to Denver and also some of those pros and cons of living up in the mountains. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, and also leave me any comments below about what kind of videos you wanna see. I'll be sure to make you one. I get a ton of calls and texts about what it's like to live in the metro area, about people moving to the metro area, maybe from out of state, or maybe even people that are living down in town that wanna to move up to the foothills or the mountains. So um, make sure you get a hold of me any way you can. I'm always super happy to help anybody out. Call me, text me, however you need to get a hold of me. I'm always here and always working and would love to help you out. So let's get started about where to live if you're thinking about moving up to the mountains or the foothills. So today I'm in Bailey, Colorado, which is up 285, and I'll show you a map about that. Obviously, it's beautiful out right now. It's fall, so beautiful colors out right now in the mountains. Just a great, peaceful place to be right now. Also, um, I'm just going to name off some towns that are what I would say commutable to Denver. We've got Bailey, which is about as far up 285 as I would go. And as you go back down the mountain, you've got Conifer, and that's where you're gonna find all your grocery stores and stuff. You're up in um, Bailey, there's really not much as far as stores go. Um, and then as you go down the mountain, you're gonna hit um, Pine, and Pine Junction. And then as you go further down, you're gonna hit Indian Hills. And then kind of in between what I call 285 and I-70, and I-70 is where you would go up to go skiing, you're gonna find Evergreen and the Genesee area. So if you think of the mountain, uh, kind of, you know, everything facing west and everything going from south to north, you've kind of got 285, which is this ba Bailey, Pine, Conifer, Indian Hills, and then in between that, you're going to have Evergreen and Genesee, and then on the other side of that, you're going to have I-70, and that's where you're going to have all your ski traffic and everything. So um, if you're in Evergreen, you can easily get to I-70 if you're in Genesee. Obviously, that's more foothills. You can easily get to I-70. And then also Golden. And um, Golden starts to spread out up north. And as you go um, up into the more mountainous parts of Golden, then you're talking uh, like Black Hawk and Central City as you go up there. And then even Idaho Springs. And I think that's probably as far as I'd go for, for commuting. Maybe Georgetown, but still pretty far. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of living up here in the mountains or the foothills. Obviously, the beauty is the number one reason to be up here and the peace and quiet that you have. And also just all the, um, the wildlife that you might see up here. I mean, mostly, mostly deers, but uh, I suppose bears and stuff like that could be a, a negative thing. Uh, so you really have to be careful about bears because you have to make sure you're locking trash cans and that kind of thing that you're not just um, leaving things out because they will get into it so you make sure you're putting that stuff away for the most part, part people really like um, seeing wildlife and stuff up here when they live up here so we already talked about the beauty and the wildlife living out here and also obviously the peace and quiet of living out here but one other benefit is that you're gonna have, um, most likely if you live in a town like Bailey or Conifer, you're most likely gonna have some land that your property sits on. So you're not stacked right next to your neighbors like you might be in um, some mountain towns though, will have it right next to each other like if you're right in town like Idaho Springs or something like that. But for the most part, you're gonna have some land and some space. So that's a pro for a lot of people. Another pro is that you're gonna have much lower population, fewer people, so you're you're going to have that peace and quiet that I talked about. And if you have kids, that peace and quiet can be cool because you can ha sometimes have animals and that kind of thing, um, which is really cool for kids to be out um, and kind of have that experience almost like they're in the country or something, but instead they're more in the mountains. 
And the other pro about living up here is the outdoor activities. Obviously, there's a ton to do up here, lots of uh, outdoor activities. I love the outdoors. That's why I always film outside. Um, I'm, or not always, but most of the time film outside. But I love to hike, love to snowshoe and that kind of thing. But if you're looking for a ski town, uh, 285 corridor is probably not your area, but maybe some of that stuff closer to I-70 is more your area. One other positive about living up here is I would say that some properties, the further you go out, um, sometimes they're less expensive than living in the city, but they usually come with some quirkiness. So a lot of places have been built onto, and you really have to think about, you know, are you going to be able to maintain that place or what, what does, what's the work that's entailed? The place I showed this morning needed lots and lots of work and was very quirky. Um, so you kind of have to be up for um, maybe a quirky uh, building layout um, if you're looking in that lower range for your area. So now we talked about some of the good things about living in the mountains. Let's talk about some of the things that might be a negative. So if you're gonna live up here, yes, it's beautiful up here and it's beautiful when it snows, but that snow, you're gonna have to drive in it or you're gonna have to plow it. So you wanna make sure that if you have a driveway, that you have a plan on how you're gonna get out of that driveway. Now they plow most of the uh, roads that are county maintained and you wanna look into that when you buy a home, but you still gotta get out of your driveway. So you just gotta think ahead of time about that. The other negative thing, that can be negative is that if you're thinking about working up here you want to make sure you have good solid internet access and that doesn't happen in every single uh, piece of property that I find you might have very poor internet access and along with that you want to think about other utilities um, such as do you get natural gas are you going to be using propane are you going to be using a wood stove and I always recommend if you're going to live up here you probably want two sources of heat like maybe a propane and a wood stove or a propane and a pellet stove, that kind of thing. So those are all things to think about if you have never lived up here. So with all those things comes more maintenance. So obviously plowing, making sure that outside of your siding is taken care of because that snow is gonna beat it down or the roof. So you have a lot more maintenance to take care of and a lot of people don't realize that when they move up to the mountains they just think about oh I'm just gonna live up in this beautiful place but it does take a, a lot more uh, maintenance and you're gonna have to know things about wells and septics and um, things like that which might be completely foreign to you because um, a lot of these towns aren't on city sewer and city water so if you have questions about that um, I might make another video on sewers and septics um, if somebody is interested in it, but it's um, something you really need to know if you're gonna move up to a mountain town. The other negative thing that you wanna think about is that you are not close to grocery stores or the mall. If going to the mall every day is your lifestyle, it probably isn't your place. Most places are gonna be 20 to 15 minutes away to the grocery store unless you're living right, right off the highway or right off 285. Um, so that's just something to think about. Also, think about schools. If you're okay with the school districts that are up here or the schools that your kids are gonna go to, I'm sure that'll be fantastic and they can take the bus, but I would not wanna commute my kid down to town for a school. So you wanna think about that. So the, all the commuting aspects are big aspects. I would not want to uh, do a huge drive down to town from here, but that's just me. Some people don't mind the drive, but I do not want to spend two to three hours in my car every day driving up and down the hill. So just something to think about from a commuting aspect. And like I said, if you're thinking about working home from home and that's your primary source of income, you want to make sure that you're going to be able to get internet access or good internet access where you're going to live. Check out my video on the pros and cons of living in the Denver metro area. That might give you an idea as well about living down in town. And also, you can always check out my videos about the cost of living in the Denver metro area. And uh, like I said, I'm always happy to answer any questions about what it's like to live in the mountains. Uh, thanks for joining me on my journey up here in the mountains. I mean, I love it up here. It's beautiful. I hope to catch you on my next video. <laughs>